SpaceX never rests. They're incredibly busy with post-Flight 5 activities. And just recently, they successfully recovered the interstage ring from Starship's fifth flight right from the depths of the ocean. But why did they do this? What technical motivations are behind this recovery effort? And what does it mean for the future flights of Starship? Let's find out everything in today's episode. On October 22, 2024, SpaceX successfully recovered the hot staging ring from the Super Heavy Booster 12, B-12, in the Gulf of Mexico, marking a significant step forward in the Starship program. What you may not know is that this recovery wasn't a spur-of-the-moment decision. It had been part of SpaceX's plan all along. Let's rewind to October 15th, just two days after the launch. Observers spotted a specialized ship moving in a strange route off the coast of the Gulf of Mexico. Its destination? A specific area, 75 feet underwater. Based on the FAA's environmental assessment for the SpaceX Starship Super Heavy Launch Vehicle Program, I was able to deduce that SpaceX was likely tracking and aiming to recover the interstage. That ship was none other than the Hose Ridgewind, a specialized recovery vessel equipped with advanced tracking technology and modern sonar systems. It was definitely out there to search for and recover the valuable interstage ring from Booster 12. And they did it. Quite literally, with Starship's fifth flight, SpaceX successfully recovered every component of a booster. Let's take a closer look at the ring. When it was pulled out of the water, its condition was surprisingly good. Despite enduring the intense forces of stage separation and impact with the ocean, the ring maintained its overall shape. The deformation amplitude is not too large, while the vent ports showed more significant erosion and deformation from the blast of the engine exhaust. SpaceX now has plenty to work with. Why is recovery necessary? The point is, why is this so important? Recovering this ring means more than most of us realize. In rocketry, there's an unbreakable rule. Mass and fuel are always tightly connected. The heavier the rocket, the more fuel it needs to land safely. And this is the major challenge SpaceX is facing with Starship's booster. Let's look at the numbers. The dry mass of the booster starts at around 200 tons. But that's just the beginning. SpaceX has been constantly improving it to ensure the booster can return to the launch pad intact. They've tripled the number of vertical reinforcement bars, also known as stringers. They've installed sophisticated filters in the fuel lines to prevent ice buildup, which could block the lines and cause the engines to shut down prematurely. And there are many other improvements as well. All these enhancements are necessary, but they've also significantly increased the booster's dry mass. In a conversation with Tim Dodd back in 2022, Elon Musk revealed an important detail. When the booster returns, it carries about 20 tons of fuel. And with that amount of fuel, the total weight of the booster should not exceed 250 tons. This is a life or death boundary. If the booster doesn't have enough fuel for the landing process, the engines will be destroyed and an explosion will be inevitable. That's why SpaceX had to make a tough decision to drop the interstage ring. With an estimated weight of around 10 tons of stainless steel, removing it significantly cuts down the booster's dry mass, increasing its chances of landing successfully. But this creates a dilemma. From the start, Starship was designed with a clear philosophy, full reusability and fast turnaround times. Dropping the interstage goes directly against Elon Musk's vision. SpaceX can't achieve the goal of 100% reusability if they have to sacrifice a crucial part after every flight. This is why, despite the current challenges, SpaceX will ultimately want to land with the interstage still attached. Collecting data as soon as possible becomes crucial for this reason. SpaceX needs to fully understand how the navigation system and grid fins respond when the booster carries the additional weight of the interstage. And now they have a key piece of the puzzle in hand, the interstage that was recovered from the ocean floor intact. However, there's an interesting detail that not everyone has picked up on. The current design of the hot staging ring might not be around for much longer. Early next year, SpaceX is expected to launch Starship 5-2 with a completely different hot staging ring design. Instead of a detachable interstage ring, the new version will feature a structure welded directly onto the top of the booster. Since the debut of Starship, I've noticed something fascinating. This rocket is a perfect blend of cutting-edge space technology from the world's leading powers. Developed by a private company, utilizing advanced computer technology, and especially its reusability, very American. The philosophy of simplification, the extremely advanced, full-flow staged combustion engines, and the hot staging phase, incredibly Russian. And here, if you place Starship's interstage ring next to the interstage of Russia's N-1 rocket, the similarities are striking. And it doesn't stop there. You can also see this design in use on Russia's Soyuz rocket, which is still operational today. This truly shows that SpaceX isn't just a pioneering company but also an organization that knows how to learn from the best of space industry history and skillfully build upon it. Now let's compare the hot staging ring design of the Booster V2 with the current version. 
Instead of the small vent holes seen on V1, the new structure looks more like a steel fence with interlocking bars. It's incredibly simple. The large gaps between the steel bars aren't just for weight reduction. They're designed to act as vents, allowing exhaust gases from the upper stage engines to escape more efficiently, reducing pressure on the top of the booster. However, every design comes with trade-offs. The new structure, which is permanently welded to the booster, will limit access to the area beneath the heat shield at the top of the booster. That's why SpaceX engineers are going to be eager to thoroughly examine the ring they just recovered. They'll inspect every detail, erosion from exhaust gases, signs of melting, any warping, and especially areas that have been stressed from high temperatures. All of these are valuable pieces in the larger puzzle. The data collected will help SpaceX calculate the temperatures and pressures that the Booster Block 2's heat shield will face during future flights. But there's still one big question. How will this new design impact the aerodynamics of the entire rocket? Attaching the ring permanently to the booster, along with changes in the vent layout, is bound to create different airflow patterns. This could affect controllability and even the rocket's trajectory. However, it's relatively hard to predict exactly how. What do you think? Share your thoughts below. Wow, the significance of the hot staging ring is more important than you might think, right? Would you like to dive deeper into the hot staging method? There's a lot to unpack about SpaceX's decision to go with hot staging. If you'd like a more detailed breakdown, let me know in the comments below. Alongside the recovery and data analysis efforts from Flight 5, SpaceX hasn't wasted any time preparing for the next mission. Less than 10 days after Flight 5, Booster 13 has already been moved to the Orbital Launch Mount OLM. The post-IFT-5 maintenance and refurbishments have basically been completed, and the scaffolding has quickly been removed by the technical teams. And what had to come has finally come. On October 25th, we witnessed an epic static fire test. This quick turnaround highlights one important thing. The launch pad system and the chopsticks arms performed exceptionally well during Flight 5. There wasn't much damage to fix, and not many adjustments were needed. This is a promising sign for the pace of Starship's development. But that's not all. Ship 31, B-13's companion for the upcoming flight, also completed a six-engine static fire test on September 18th. It's currently in the Mega Bay, getting its heat shield tiles finalized. With that, both stages of the Starship for Flight 6 have completed their individual tests. Soon, they'll be ready for stacking and integrated testing. On the legal side, everything is set. The FAA has approved the paperwork for Flight 6, with a mission structure similar to the previous flight. This means we won't be seeing the spacecraft return to the launch site RTLS just yet. Elon Musk confirmed this in a tweet. Hopefully early next year we will catch the ship too. This decision makes perfect sense. SpaceX wouldn't want to risk bringing the spacecraft back while they're still working on solving the structural durability issues of the flaps. These aerodynamic surfaces play a crucial role in ensuring a precise landing, especially at a fixed location like the catching tower. So, we can expect the upper stage of Starship to return once SpaceX moves to testing Starship Block 2 early next year. As of now, I predict that Flight 6 could happen in the latter half of November. This is an optimistic guess, based on the current testing progress and the necessary preparations. What about you? Share your predictions in the comments below. All right, that's it for today. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more in-depth looks at the latest advancements in space technology. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.